And I call the question is that the motion be agreed to, and I call the member for Fremantle. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Wow, wow. I mean, at the end of a, of a long year and last year of Parliament, this motion really is something. It is a, it's a waste of time because it's, it's fundamentally hollow and, frankly, it, it, it is silly. It is silly in the extreme. It is utterly without substance. The basic assertions and assumptions are wrong. The whole thing depends on cooked up fear mongering and false claims. And I, I genuinely wonder whether the member for Fairfax really believes some of the rhubarb he's trying to peddle here today. In essence, this motion and the embarrassing questions advanced in question time by coalition members last week are designed to whip up some kind of political advantage from misunderstanding and disingenuousness and xenophobia. That is all there is to it. And I reckon Australians are thoroughly sick of that. I reckon Australians are thoroughly sick of that at the end of been what's quite a long year. I reckon Australians have had a gutful of that kind of dishonest and lazy political game playing. The essential falsehood in this motion, Deputy Speaker, is that the Australian government has signed some kind of blank chip, and that is wrong. That is a falsehood. And that's what the, mo and that's what the motion says, and it's, it's a lie. It's a lie. And the motion says the Australian government has already made a pledge of a funding scheme, and that is a lie. That is not true. And the member said that this is a compensation fund. It is expressly not a compensation fund. That is a lie. It demands, this motion demands answers to questions that don't exist. How much has been pledged? No pledges have been made by Australia or by any other country. It is expressly not a compensation fund, Deputy Speaker. But all of this is designed to create a cloud of bulldust that might trigger people into believing that sensible international cooperation in the global effort against climate change is actually a secret plot that seeks to penalise Australia. Sadly, Deputy, sadly, Deputy Speaker, all of this is born of a coalition that was hopeless and desperate in its dying days of government and yet apparently remains hopeless and desperate to this very day. The truth is, the Australian government, along with many of our best and most sensible allies, the US, the UK, the EU, we've agreed to a framework for ensuring that developed countries can help provide support to developing countries in dealing with the impact of climate change. That's what this fund is about. It's no different from the way Australia supports climate-related measures in our region. It's no different, in essence, from the Green, Green Climate Fund that the coalition government signed up to in 2016. It's the kind of assistance that reflects our character and promotes our national interest, especially with respect to the support we provide for nations that comprise our Pacific friends and neighbours. It's the kind of assistance you should absolutely provide, even if you're taking the most selfish perspective possible, because it will help ensure resilience and stability and peace and trade and economic self-sufficiency in our region, all of which is to Australia's benefit. Now, this morning, I attended a gathering as part of the Pacific Australia Emerging Leaders Summit, and needless to say, the issue of responding cooperatively to the impacts of climate change and the concept of climate justice was mentioned by everyone who spoke. Minister Conroy's statement that the Australian government will provide an additional $900 million to the Pacific over four years in development assistance with a focus on climate change was welcomed by all and Shadow Minister McCormack said he agreed with and endorsed every part of that approach. But Deputy Speaker, but Deputy Speaker in stark contrast to that kind of bipartisan common sense, this motion peddles the idea that supporting climate action in the Pacific somehow penalises Australia. And what's almost funny, Deputy Speaker, is that in amongst all the falsehoods and bad faith and climate denialist dog whistling of this motion is the suggestion that the coalition is somehow interested in carefully managed budgets and carefully applied taxpayers' money. I mean, give me a break. These are the jokers who burn billions of dollars in their awful mismanagement of the French submarine project. These are the jokers who wasted more than $19 billion in JobKeeper payments to companies whose profits rose during the pandemic. $2.6 billion went to companies whose turnover more than doubled in the relevant period. And if the particular flavour of your funding waste outrage was in relation to money sent overseas, don't forget that some of the largest recipients of those wasted JobKeeper billions were foreign companies with foreign shareholders who pocketed the lazy, incompetent largesse gifted by those opposites. You talk, about, you talk about shrewd operators, you talk about money to give away and cunning plans, bloody have a good look at yourselves, for God's sake. So while the motion seeks to whip up anger out of misunderstanding and xenophobia and small-mindedness, the reality is that after a decade of climate denialism and the clownish ineptitude of those opposite, the Albanese Labor government is returning Australia to its historical position 
and to its historical character and values as a cooperative, supportive, influential middle power. That's who we are, and without question, that is in our national interest.